Welcome to Invictus Motors. We've got an Alpine here. This is one car that I've been most looking forward to here at the dealership and we've got it here now. This is a first time, first impression review of, I haven't even sat in it, I haven't driven it, so let's find out. On a day-to-day -day basis, we sell Porsches. So this is going to be a bit of a comparison with what you could do with circa, you know, 40,000 pounds. Why buy one of these than a Porsche? And that is what I would like to hit in terms of a sweet no. But the Alpine, what does the Alpine stand for? I mean, where does the name come from? The heritage, the history? Uh, I'm curious, I want to know because this car really fascinates me from a performance point of view, from the point of view where this is a very nimble, small sports car, and nowadays sports, car, sports cars from around this year, they're massive. I mean, just looking at the size and the scale of it, whereas this really truly reflects the sports cars that we've had in the 50s, the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and not what we actually find in sort of the 2000s as such. And even that, despite, you know, when you compare them to the Porsche Cayman 987s or the 911 997s, this is still a rather petite car compared to them. But now, Alpine history. Alpine was the brainchild of uh, someone called Jean Redel. He was an ex-pilot a Renault dealer and also raced cars. So he basically took a Renault 4CV chassis and created a prototype which won uh, a race called the Alpine Rally, otherwise or commonly known as Coupe de Alps. And that was in 1954. And this now is the car that is currently for sale, which is a premier edition. So it's about number 1,400 and I think 14 of 1,955. The reason it's 1,955 of them that were the launch production cars is because of the fanfare around it. They wanted it extremely well specced, a beautiful color, beautiful alloys, retractable side door mirrors. I mean, you name it, the switchable exhaust system, uh, the LED lights, this has got all the bells and whistles. This is basically a collector's item. This has basically still has the one liter oil that it left from factory with. It's in a condition that is absolutely immaculate, which is why I'm going to be taking it out to test drive it, to experience what it's like, and to actually talk about aesthetically what it looks like, a visual um, elements of it. Let's talk about that now, starting from right here. This is this isn't just a diffuser that you commonly find on a car that is just a diffuser, aesthetically looks good. This actually has a, 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 a purpose from an aerodynamic point of view because when you look all the way underneath, this goes, I mean, quite further down. I mean, it's almost, you know, midway into the car. It's a mid-engine car, so you end up getting the situation of what you would find in a Cayman, a rear boot and a front boot, which is rather practical enough. You can actually see the two fans here at the back for the mid-engine layout. Additionally, it is a, a low-sitting car. It comes with these really comfortable bucket seats, but before we can actually start talking about the interior, let's just swerve to the right and talk about these little, subtle, beautiful touches where you find uh, these scoops here, the whole of the passenger and the driver's side um, doors or the glass are it's just molded into this little area and you find these scoops which is going to give a very nice sound uh, from an air induction point of view. I'm not going to be shouting this out but this is not a Renault. It doesn't say a Renault in it anywhere, it's an Alpine so let's get that right. Hence why you've got an, the, the, the Alpine symbol over there, the A, you've got the Alpine symbol here at the front. I mean, just looking at it uh, from this, this, this front facing point of view, you've got Alpine here. You've got this beautiful, lovely uh, shape and a very aggressive front looking bumper, the front splitter there. I mean, all in all, this is a rather good looking car. So right from the get go, what you find is the Ferrari-like or the Aston Martin-like display here with the buttons. So you've got your drive, neutral and reverse. And then obviously you've got the red button uh, which says start engine or stop engine. And here you've got another red button which is the sports button here right in the middle. The steering wheel is, you know, very beautiful to hold on to. 
I mean, all in all, this is an incredibly smart, sports orientated sports car. And um, it's very luxurious. Uh, and it's got all the essential key items one would want. Um, it isn't an essential key item, but I think it's nice to have parking sensors in, in, in cars like this because, you know, you put so much into it. Immediately from the get-go, you get a very beautiful sound uh, from the exhaust as is. But let's just switch on the sports button. Uh, well, press the sports button. I'm sure you are loving the exhaust not as much as me but it's got this really it's got this really nice sound on the downshifts that verbal and this is where we actually talk about the performance figures on this because this has a 1.8 liter turbocharged engine which produces 250 brake horsepower and hold on a minute it's able to do not to 62 miles per hour as quick as a Porsche 911 991 Carrera S which will produce between 2011 to 2015 so that should tell you everything you need to know from a performance point of view on how well this is able to pick up speed and that's due to the fact that the, that the total curb weight of this is merely 1,100 kilograms, as opposed to the 911 is circa 1,550 kilograms. And in terms of torque-wise, this is able to produce 320 newton meters of torque. Combined MPG, one is able to do uh, and get approximately 35 miles per gallon out of this. And in terms of the small nature and, and how small this car is, you just saw how quickly I was able to do that turn. This is another great feature of this because it's a small car, it's got a very good turning circle, it handles amazingly well. And if you, you we've got the seven speed automatic transmission here which is a dual clutch gearbox so you don't really actually feel the gear changes as you would on an analog or, or a single clutch automatic gearbox and you've got the um, paddle shifts as well so you've got the minus there on the left drop it to four the, oh sounds amazing This definitely meets my expectations and everything that I was looking forward to when it came to an Alpine, I mean all my expectations, everything that I imagined to have in, in, in something like this, you know, it, it's there um, aesthetically, the way it drives, the way it handles, I mean all the fanfare around the Alpine is true, it's truly legit, so, you know, I absolutely, you know, I think this is this is a, a, an incredible. It's a great car. So thank you very much for tuning in to you know the test drive part of it, and let's talk about the interiors next. Now, what can we expect on the interior? Well, firstly, what I love is the color matching of this inside door, both on the driver and the passenger side, which sort of color coordinates with the outside. Lovely little touch. And you also find the French flag leather here. Um, you, you get the blue stitching all the way uh, used through the leather. And you know, just got a very nice solid feel to it. You've got the lovely bucket seats, which are leather and Alcantara. And it's got a lot of lovely and beautiful chrome touches to it. You've got the flat bottom 
Alcantara leather steering wheel. You've got the sports button here, which basically completely changes the exhaust knob because the exhaust uh, valves open up and sounds absolutely amazing. It's an absolute must, you know, when, when you're going to own one of these, I think it's, it's important to have this. Again, you get the Alpine, you get a very smart entertainment system there. You get the plaque, which, sorry to get that wrong at the beginning, it's actually 1,464 of 1955. And the reason it's 1955 is this is when the Alpine's really in prominence. So this is when it first started. Jean Redel won the Alpine Rally in 1954 and in 1955 was when the Alpine was born. <laughs> so this is on the interior. I think it's a very smart, beautiful looking car and having really had this amazing test drive, I think, um, you know, if you are looking for an Alpine for the price, for the condition, for the spec, the fact this is the premium launch edition, this is surely a car that one's gonna keep for a very, very long time. Now, in terms of service history, it's got a full Renault service history. It's also impressive to know how little a major service cost at Renault. It's about 450 pounds for a major service on a sports car. That is wow. And um, it's got two, two owners from new, so from 2018 up to now, it's got two owners only. So I hope I've covered everything. I think it's a very smart car, beautiful looking. I love there's loads of light being led into the inside. I love the glass here. And um, yeah, I mean, as, as I mentioned, you know, the, the whole styling, the, the, the two boots, the aerodynamicness of it, the fact that you've got these LED lights uh, at the back, I, I think this is a very stunning, smart looking car. And talking about the LED lights, I just love when you open the car and you close the car, yeah, you, I mean, you open and you lock it, just the red light sitting there. I think it, it's a beautiful look. It's a very smart look. And the fact that the uh, side door mirrors retract in. So thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned and hopefully we'll, we'll have more of these comparisons.